consider this example. I see this all the time. People using a Z stack to add a background to a view or using a Z stack to show a pop up if some sort of condition is met. In my opinion, both of these approaches degrade the readability of the code in most situations, while they are only necessary for a specific condition. All of this code is now nested inside of a Z stack, even if it's just the main view that's shown most of the time. You can write cleaner, more readable code with this concept. At the end of the video, I'll tell you the most readable approach, so stick around. Hey, I'm Flo, I'm an indie iOS developer, and on this channel I teach you iOS and Apple platform development with Swift and SwiftUI. Subscribe if you want to level up your iOS developer skills. So let's start with the most obvious change we should make, and that's this background color. And as I just said, it's a background color, and in SwiftUI there is a baked-in implementation for backgrounds, and that's not using a Z-Stack. So we can get rid of this color.orange, and in fact, let me just cut out the main view here so we have a blank canvas to start with and instead of using a z-stack i would recommend to use the background view modifier and in this case we can just say dot orange now with a different overload of the background view modifier where you pass in a closure you can define your own custom background views so this is already much cleaner because the background is to me and to many other developers a property of the view. So there is the main view and then you might say, okay, there is a layer behind that view. This is the Z stack approach, but you might also say the main views background, which implies that background is a part of the main view and hence you should use the view modifier. So now we fixed the first issue. Now the second issue remains and this is arguably the more um, yeah, interesting one. And that's the pop-up that we want to show if some sort of condition is met. Before we used the Z stack, we had a if show pop-up and then we had our pop-up view in there. But I would argue that there is a cleaner solution here and this is a two-step approach. So we will first create the solution here in our Z views struct. And then later on, I will show you the cleanest solution. So stick around until the end. So similar to the background modifier to place something behind your view, there is also a view modifier to add a layer on top of your view. And in this case, there is the overlay view modifier. And just to make sure you understand how this works, the most basic one doesn't have to have this alignment property. And if you don't add it, it's basically set to center. But you can play around with this in a second because this alignment property allows you to create very complex uh, yeah, Z layouts without using a Z stack and with keeping your code way more readable. So in here we can now directly show our pop-up view and then you can see this is producing the exact same result as the Z stack approach would but in my opinion this is already much more readable. Now, of course we don't want to show this pop-up all the time even in this overlay, we can use an if statement here and say only if we want to show the pop-up if this state is set to true, then the view should be shown. And let's manually set this to false and you will notice it will get removed from the preview once it finishes rendering. And there you go. All right, so let's move that back to true. So we have our starting point again. So this is already a very big and major improvement over the Z stack approach. But now let me show you how you can make this even cleaner. And the magic is called view modifier structs. So as you can imagine, a pop-up like this is probably used in several places in your app. And we will now go into detail on how you can implement a reusable view modifier here. So you can start by just typing view modifier and you will see that Xcode has an autocomplete here. So you just hit enter and then it already creates the body with some uh, dummy modifiers in there. So we will call this um, pop-up modifier or actually let's call it pop-up view modifier. And we can actually get rid of this preview here. And then in here we can just do whatever we want. So in our case, we will grab this overlay here and add it to the content. So for your understanding, content is the parameter that gets passed into this view modifier. And basically content is the view that you apply the modifier to. So in this case, if we apply the modifier 
right here, then the view that we apply to is not the main view. It's the main view with the background. So this entire chain of views and view modifiers. The content of this background view modifier is the main view. I think you're getting it. And this is also why it's very relevant in which order you place your view modifiers. All right, so now you can notice an issue here where it says cannot find show pop-up in scope. And that makes sense because show pop-up is only in the scope of our Z views and not in the scope of our pop-up view modifier. So how do we fix this? We can uh, let the view modifier know about the scope by adding a variable here. And we will actually not be using a state, a binding or the add bindable macro. We will just be using a let constant and we will call it show pop-up set that to a bool and then we now have access to it here. So now of course we could use this view modifier in our uh, view here and use our pop-up view modifier and pass in our state variable and as you can see in the preview this already works like a charm but this is not very swift UI like to me because we don't say dot modifier and then in the uh, parentheses background view modifier passing in orange, we want to have this exact API here. So how do we implement that? Having our view modifier here, we now create an extension on view, the view protocol itself. So we'll create a static function that wraps our dot modifier call. So we will say static func popup. And of course, we will have to pass our show popup boolean here. So you can just call this is presented and this is the usual way that these APIs are called and this will just be a boolean. This returns some view and in here we can just say modifier our pop-up view modifier and show pop-up is the is presented value that we get from here. And of course this function shouldn't be static. This should just be a regular function because we're applying it to a view not to a type. So now we can get rid of this line here and instead just say dot popup is presented is our show popup and just like that we're done. Now one bonus thing if you want to be able to close the popup from within you would have to switch these two constants to be bindings. So let's have a quick look at how that would work. So we would pass a binding of bool to our um, pop-up extension here. Then here we would change this to be a binding var. And then in our um, view, we will have to use the dollar syntax to access the projected value here, which is the binding uh, for state variables. And then of course we can now use this in our pop-up view. So in here we could also create a add binding var is presented and make sure this is a bool and then we could add a button in here and it could just be a little close button and this would say is presented dot toggle and then we just pass this into our view so here is called show pop-up and of course here we have to use the projected value again because we're using add binding and just like that we now have to wait for the preview to compile and why does it only say cl Oh, might be a compilation issue here. Okay, so now we can press close and the pop-up is gone. So now you understand how you can make data flow through all of this overhead. So uh, we have our state here. We pass it into our wrapping function. This passes it into our view modifier and this then passes it into our pop-up view. So now you understand why in most cases you don't actually need a Z stack, even though this video was a bit of a tangent. We learned about the dot background modifier and why it's cleaner than ZStack. We also learned about how to factor out any overlays that you have in your views that you're conditionally showing.